guys puppies world here we have the oppo udp 203 we are doing 4k dolby atmos ultra high definition high dynamic range testing on the sony 4k xpr 850c 55 inch high dynamic range display triluminous um, we're going to be doing Hacksaw Ridge, a 4K Blu-ray of course, and we're going to be doing a full startup from off, powered off power conditioner and surge protector, and seeing our amperage draw, we're going to go ahead, we've got all of them plugged in of course, and uh, set up and wired, we're going to be using just the AudioQuest Vodka HDMI, um, okay, we've got minimum HDMI 1.4 and 2.0. And you got HDCP 2.2 going right here. We need minimum HDMI 2.0 from Oppo to run 4K and high dynamic range guys in Atmos. So, word of mouth about that really quickly, you do need. Uh, so, required for Atmos, you will not be able to put this Blu ray or any other Blu ray or any other media form with Dolby Atmos, as you can see. Dolby Atmos into a Blu ray player or 4K Blu ray player if it does not have the. Dolby Atmos decoding signal on it, the sign signal. So, you are looking for that Dolby Atmos little sign. Um, I don't see it on the top of the OPPO here. It's not displayed. You'll be looking for that guy or DTSX symbol because you do need the decoding um, capability of from the DVD player. Um, and then it does need to pass through a receiver with that decoding um, capability to it as well. So you're gonna need a receiver with Dolby Atmos uh, signal on it and um, the DTSX sign on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and power us up really quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and do that because that's getting in the way. It's getting annoying. There's glimpses of light every now, once in a while. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and power us up real quick. We got the the uh, female here for her uh, take on things as well, and we'll be doing a video with her as what she likes and doesn't like about it. Okay. Okay, as you could hear that, hear that, uh, hear those caps power up in there, and then we're gonna go ahead and do a power on using the receiver because we've got this in. The audio return channel, of course, from the television via HDMI as well. I believe we're using a carbon audio quest cable this time. Or a chocolate. Yeah, it's a chocolate. Yeah, okay, I got the carbon in the other room. So, straight devices off still. We are going to be powering on AVR. And our receiver is powering up. And we're also going to go ahead and hit our. TV power. As you can see that engage as well. Main zone on of our SR7010 Marantz. We've got it in Blu-ray of course. We're gonna have an Atmos beginning and update as well. Alright. There's the HDMI 4 audio return channel input. Um, both uh, devices are wired into that input on the TV, the audio return channel. Now you can see just quickly what occurred. Naturally, this TV and receiver will shut itself off and operate just through TV speakers. So that's one aspect of the DVD player that's not uh, necessarily its own uh, doing. That's my uh, equipment doing that its own, um, and that is because of the audio return channel input. So, all right, now we're gonna go ahead and power the Oppo on. Dunk, little dirty guys. Right now I've left that that way specifically so that I can see how much dust or dirt buildup will accumulate over a seven day period. And we have exhumed that, the seven day period here. Exceeded that, I mean. Okay, we're in the UDP 203 menu. So you saw how quickly it loads up and starts. Um, if I'm not mistaken here, it'll go directly into the disc, yes. We do not want to resume, of course. We want to go back from the beginning. So we're gonna grab our Oppo UDP 203 remote control. We're gonna see that it does light up. When picked up again, we are going to say resume not. I'll go ahead and get into the, the movie here, the film. Okay, I'm not pirating this movie in any way, shape, or form, so I will not be uh, showing you. However, as of this moment right now, we are in HD Master Audio DTS and Neural X. So, as we said, we want to get into Atmos. 
you will not have the Atmos in the beginning aspect of the film in any way, shape, or form in the previews of the menu. You will only have Atmos once that actual film has started playing. Uh, so we're not there yet, as we know that. But guys, uh, keep in mind, you take this same Blu-ray and operate it in the Samsung K8500, it will not do Dolby Atmos. You will get no Dolby Atmos decoding out of that Samsung DVD player, the Blu-ray K8500. Not sure about the newer one, but I do know the Panasonic will and should do the Dolby Atmos. So, PS4, quick word of mouth, guys. I took the same DVD, the same Blu-ray, and the 4K version, same Blu-ray, brought it in the bedroom, of course, and operated it through the PS4 while, uh, you know, sleeping, kind of. And uh, during the night, I did notice and play around with the input signal on my NR1606 and uh, played around with the linear PCM output on it versus Bitstream Direct, um, the Dolby versus the DTS um, sound output setting on it, and virtually I found what I, uh, what, what I would have um, thought from the beginning, guys. You set that to your PCM linear when you are experiencing a 7.1 um, uncompressed form of audio, so virtually what I'm saying is, PCM, a linear PCM is best for taking a 5.1 or even a stereo signal and converting it uncompressed into a 7.1 or 7.2 surround sound signal. So the Bitstream Direct is going to take the soundtrack directly from the disc or whatever form of media you have and give that many channels. So if you're watching a Blu-ray or a 4K Blu-ray, go with Bitstream Direct. It's gonna be already recorded with those surround channels in it. You're not gonna need to uh, basically virtualize any further channels from that point. Uh, linear PCM go with if you're watching an older DVD because that would not have the surround sound capabilities at least 5.1, it would have Dolby Digital. So we're into the age here where Dolby Digital is kind of old and uh, gone. Uh, we're also into the age where Dolby True HD is almost, um, you know, it's, it's showing up on most uh, receivers, of course, still nowadays, but uh, that Atmos is what we're looking for, um, and it's not happening for a lot of people, and the reason is because you need the decoding features on those capabilities. Those devices require that Dolby Atmos or DTSX sign on there as a decoding feature. Um, you'll talk to some sales reps, and they will tell you, no, that's just a, an aspect of adding two more uh, surround sound uh, matrix uh, features or channels to the, uh, no, no, guys, it's not. It's, Dolby Atmos can do up to 64 different speakers um, and channels uh, settings, so... Yeah, keep in mind, that's the next best form of surround sound. So we're going to be going for Atmos here. Of course, you can see we're not in it yet. We are in that. We can show you really quickly that from the blue disc menu of any 4K Blu-ray, we will just go to Setup. We will just go to Audio like that, and we'll have the Atmos in there right there. So we have Atmos selected, of course. We'll be going back. And then we're going to be going into just play the movie, guys. So we're going to make sure we're in 4K really quickly. We're going to turn you way up.